Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Many people have asked me to comment about whether or not the Sun possesses a net electric charge. In order to address this question, let us first consider this image reflecting the presence of neutral iron at the level of the photosphere. Iron has a first ionization energy of only about 760 kilojoules per mole, compared to 1300 kilojoules per mole for hydrogen. Iron would be easily ionized if the photosphere had a net positive charge. Clearly, the photosphere cannot possess a significant charge, as it is surrounded by neutral atoms. Astronomers, beginning with Wilt and including Chandrasekhar, have tried to argue that the negative hydrogen ion, or H-, is a key component in generating the solar spectrum at the level of the photosphere, as we saw in this video. The claim is not reasonable. It takes a vibrational lattice in order to produce a thermal spectrum, as you can learn here. Invocation of the negative hydrogen ion is merely an attempt to patch a fatal flaw in the gaseous standard model of the Sun. The negative hydrogen ion is said to have only one bound state, as you can learn in this paper. For the hydrogen anion, the transition is out to the continuum. Note that even ordinary negative ions, such as chloride and fluoride anions, have not been detected on the Sun. So to argue that a negative species like the hydride anion exists to any great extent, when the species such as chloride and fluoride are not found, is simply not reasonable. What we do observe are neutral atoms and molecules at the level of the photosphere and above sunspots. Here are some examples. The fact that these neutral atoms and molecules exist at the level of the photosphere is a sure proof that this layer cannot hold any significant charge. The most reasonable conclusion from all this is that the photosphere of the Sun can neither be negatively or positively charged. It must be neutral. But what about the solar atmosphere above the photosphere? In the chromosphere, we see emission lines both from neutral atoms and positively charged ions. We also know that highly oxidized species like iron-25 exist in the corona. In fact, you could find coronal structures richly surrounded by highly oxidized species which extend all the way from the K-corona to the photosphere. In the standard model, the presence of such ions has been linked to temperatures in the millions of degrees at distances of 1 R above the photosphere. More than a dozen ideas for heating the corona at this point have been proposed, as you can learn in this text. However, it is clear that what causes the behavior cannot be a change in temperature. We already learned in this video that there is a strong evidence that the K-corona actually cools with distance from the photosphere. I have argued that the K-corona and coronal structures are comprised of condensed matter. They represent type 1 metallic hydrogen which has been propelled from the photospheric level into the solar atmosphere. It is likely that this material has extreme electron affinity keeping positive charges as far away from one another as possible. The corona harnesses electrons from the outer atmosphere and channels these back towards the surface of the Sun, thereby helping to maintain the neutrality of the solar body. As a result, the Sun is trying to capture electrons in order to stay as electrically neutral as possible. It leaves traces of this action through the emission of highly oxidized species in the corona. In conclusion, the photosphere simply cannot carry a net charge. It is well known that neutral atoms and molecules exist near the surface. Conversely, coronal material appears to possess increased electron affinity with elevation. This has been improperly ascribed to increased temperatures with elevation in the corona. The corona is clearly positively charged. As a result, the Sun does have a net charge, and that net charge rests in the corona. In the end, the chromosphere and corona should be viewed not in terms of random events, as suggested in the standard model, but rather as vital components in preventing excessive mass loss or electric charge buildup, respectively, in the Sun, as we saw in these videos. That being said, do continue to support me through your views and likes. 
subscribe, promote the channel with your local astronomy club, and stick with me as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.